The new Insta360 RS has just landed and I was fortunate enough to have Insta360 send me the twin edition to try out and make a video for today's launch. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what's inside the box, the RS's new features and how you can use this one camera as your main moto vlogging and action camera. And before we start, I just need to mention that this video is not sponsored by Insta360 and that the information and the experiences I'm about to share with you are based on the 12 days of me using this camera prior to uploading this video. Also, I've never owned the RS's predecessor, the One R. So this whole modular design thing is very new and very exciting for me. However, if you do own the One R, the new lenses and battery are interchangeable with the R. So you can actually upgrade your One R at your own speed. How sick is that? Okay, let's take a look at what's inside the twin edition RS box. In the box, you will receive the Insta360 RS Core, the new and improved 4K boost lens, the 360 lens, the lens cap for the 360 lens, the battery base, the mounting bracket housing, a quarter inch thumb screw, USB-C charging cable, and some stickers, documents, and warranty, all that good stuff. Assembling is super easy and is basically just like the One R if you already own one. To get started, pop open your side door to insert your micro SD card, which is sold separately. Now decide which lens you'd like to attach. Do you want to go 360 and capture the bubble around the camera or do you want to go standard 4K lens like GoPro styles? We'll have a look at the features of each in just a moment, but for now, let's stick the 360 lens on. Once you've attached the lens, simply attach the battery to the underside of the unit. Then slide the RS into its housing and close the quick release latch until you hear the snap of the lock. Insta360 recommend using the housing whenever recording with the RS. It helps to dissipate heat for longer shoot times and it acts as a windproof mic cover to help boost audio performance. Now just mount it to your bike wherever you please. I like to also preview the footage via the app to make sure I'm happy with the position of the camera and shoot settings. For 360 mode, I shoot in 5.7K at 30 frames a second, which is what Insta360 recommend for the 360 lens and is its default setting out of the box. Hit record and you're good to go. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how 360 degree cameras work, basically you point the camera anywhere you want and it captures a 360 degree bubble around it. So I just moved the camera down, literally just pulled it right down, mounted it here, so we get like a nice eye line level. So I guess this could be cool for instead of using just say this camera, you just have this and then you can spin it around whichever way you want. And if you know something interesting happens over there, you can look there, or there, or there, on the sky or at the ground, literally <laughs> wherever you want. But with this, it's literally just pointing back, that's it. Shoot first, point later. And don't worry, it is a strange concept at first. I remember when I first used it, I was like, how is this, is this right? I'm just literally pointing it in any direction, but it is that whole concept of just pointing it. And then when you go later in post, you pick the angle that you want. It's very, very clever stuff. And once you get the hang of it, you will realize it's full potential. I'll be releasing a video very soon on how I edit my 360 degree videos on the studio app. That's for the desktop. If that's something that you think you'll be interested in, then make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. I also have a video on five beginner friendly Insta360 angles for your motorcycle to get you started and I'll link that at the end of this video. All right, sick. So we just went for a ride and got our fancy 360 degree footage. Now what? Now we switch to dedicated motor vlogging mode. Woo! In the past, we've tried motor vlogging with the Insta360 ONE X2, which is doable, but the camera shape itself is pretty damn awkward for mounting on the front of a helmet. Also, some of you pointed out that the 5.7K resolution of the 360 camera doesn't cut it when motor vlogging due to the quality being reduced significantly when cropping the 360 degree footage. Well, now our issues are solved with the 4K boost lens. Remove the 360 degree lens and make sure you put it somewhere safe with the lens cover on it to prevent marking the protruding lenses. Attach the 4K boost lens, then remove the battery door by gently pulling it. Slide the unit into the housing and attach the dedicated mic adapter which can be purchased separately for about $20 US and attach the unit to your helmet and plug in your mic. Now a really cool thing that I noticed straight away when powering up the RS is that you're automatically prompted with mic level input control with a dB meter as microphones don't always produce the same output level as each other. And to now have an action camera that caters for this means that we can prevent our audio from either clipping or from being too quiet. This is genius. This is so sick. I love this. So the decibel increments are by six decibels, up to plus 18 and down to minus 18. I've got mine set to minus 18 because the Pebble Panda microphone is right in front of my mouth. The unit size, I reckon, is so good compared to the um, Hero 7 that I usually use with the mic adapter on top. Usually that's right in my eye line. I can see that mic adapter just sticking out like crazy. With this, it's so sleek. I, can, I, I can't actually see the unit, which is awesome. I can only see this little lead here which, you know, whatever, I could get a right angled lead and um, plug it in. Man, it's a bumpy road. And um, I won't have an issue there, but it's, it's perfect. 
And I feel like there is a little bit of compression with the audio. So when I'm talking, you probably hear the mic level or the, the exhaust level, sorry, go down. Um, and my voice is obviously very, very prominent. And then as I stop talking, you can probably hear the pipes really well, which is, I think is pretty cool. Cause then, you know, if you just want to get some orgasmic pipe sound, <laughs> you can just not talk and let the pipes do the talking for you. When in video mode and choosing your resolution, you'll see two extra tabs titled Flow State and Post. With the powerful new 1RS Core, Insta360's Flow State stabilization is now delivered through the camera's hardware for super smooth videos. With enhanced stabilization applied in camera, we can now instantly share smooth wide angle content to social media without having to process it in the Insta360 app. Or if you prefer, flick it over to Post if you'd like to have a little more control and adjust the type of angle you'd like later using the app. The RS Core also features 50% faster Wi-Fi for easy mobile file transfers, an instant zoom function for digitally zooming in up to 2.7 times while recording videos, a quick menu for easy access to preset shooting modes, and a 21% boost in battery life. Now I asked Insta360 what the battery life is like, and they wrote back to me saying that the new RS Core actually absorbs more battery power, so it actually uses 21% more power to you know, process all of its information. But the internal lab testing results are that the RS Core and 4K boost lens are 75 minutes, the RS Core and 360 lens, 82 minutes, and the RS Core and the one inch wide angle lens is 84 minutes. So it still absolutely annihilates GoPro by a damn mile. And I mean like 82 minutes, man. That's a long time. That's a long, that's a long time. <laughs> Get two batteries. I always have a spare battery anyway. Get two batteries and you're damn laughing for the whole day. Easy. I get like 50 minutes out of this and pretty much the same out of this. And we all know that action camera microphones usually suck. Especially when you go up to high speeds, you just have wind noise and it gets all weird and a bit crazy. Well, the Insta360 RS has an extra microphone and an updated algorithm to help produce crisper audio, which is what you're hearing right now. Now they do have a cold shoe mount, which is available to purchase on their store, which means that you can mount up your favorite mic. Right now I'm using the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. I mean, it looks pretty ridiculous, but I'd imagine it sounds pretty good. I would actually like to see them come out with something like GoPro's media mode. I feel like they have everything there. The whole facility is there pretty much. Just literally slide it into a media mode with a built-in better microphone and away you go. Cause that media mode is actually pretty handy. I tried out the slow motion feature while washing my bike. In this mode, the IRS shoots at 200 frames a second at 1080p, which is what you're seeing right now. It's not that great. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really use this unless I'm just posting it on Instagram or something like that. But it also shoots in 100 frames per second at 2.7K, which is the footage you're seeing right now, which is a little bit better. It's a bit of an improvement. When in video mode though, and switch to flow state, you can shoot 4K up to a maximum of 60 frames per second, which is what you're seeing right here. And it looks much better. I just slowed it down by 50% in Final Cut Pro and added optical flow to it. And it looks damn fantastic. The upgraded 4K boost lens is now fitted with a half inch 48 megapixel image sensor and now has two new innovative modes. The first mode being active HDR. HDR stands for high dynamic range and helps in maintaining detail in the highlights and the shadows. Usually for HDR video, you need to place the camera in a stationary position to prevent ghosting occurring in your footage. The 4K boost lens now keeps your footage stabilized as you move, minimizing ghosting and revealing details in the highlights and shadows that other action cameras would miss. The second mode is a 6K widescreen option. Taking full advantage of the 48 megapixel sensor, this mode outputs ultra high resolution 6K footage with a classic 2.35 to one ratio for a cinematic widescreen look. The app has also had an upgrade with its powerful new editing suite and Snap Wizard, which allows you to easily edit your 360 videos and share them instantly. I'll cover more of this in detail in a future video. Now, because these things are modular system, there are several purchasing options available. The twin edition includes the powerful combination of the 4K boost lens and the 360 lens and offers the the best value at $549.99 US. For users looking at upgrading their wide angle action cam setup, the 4K edition retails for around $300 US. 
and the core, the mounting bracket and battery are also available to purchase as a bundle. You can literally just slowly build your camera, especially for you guys that have the R body. You can just slowly attach the modules to it. How good is that? I reckon that's so clever. That's so sick. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is not a sponsored video. However, I do have an affiliate link in the description below where I do get a small kicker from each purchase made through that link. It actually goes such a long way in supporting me and the channel. If you look in the description below, you'll not only see an affiliate link for the Insta360 RS, but to also many of the brands that I love and wear, but most importantly, trust. And I'd love to give a shout out to anyone who's made a purchase using my affiliate link so far. I really do appreciate it. It goes a long way, such a long way. Thank you. Now, like everything I review on this channel, I do like to try to find things that I had issues with, things that I just didn't like and, and concerns that I had. First was the lack of sound when hitting the quick capture button. Now, while you're riding, you've got wind noise, you're cruising. Oh. Now, while you're riding, you've got wind noise, you're cruising around. You can't hear that. There's like, there's no chance you can hear that. And even trying to find that little tiny light at the front, you just have this little blinking light here. And trying to find a revision mirror while you're doing it, just trying to pick, like, trying to find that light, it's very hard to see. Also, there's no lens, there's no replaceable lens where you can just twist it off and put a new one on just in case you crack it. Sort of like the Hero 8, which is really the reason why I didn't buy it. You guys had workarounds for that as well. Still just a bit of a pain, you know. I'd just rather just have a little twist on lens cover. So if you do scratch, or mark the lens, you can just replace it with like a $20 one or something. No ND filters yet. They will be coming out soon, apparently, um, but there's none yet. When you use the 360 camera, like, yeah, it's cool. You got a lens projector for it. So when you put it back in your bag, you're not going to scratch these lenses. But then this little guy is all alone and doesn't have anything to protect him with. So I've been putting it in like a sock or just wrapping it up in something, but it'd be cool if there was just a little pouch for this little guy as well. I think that'd be pretty cool. He's all alone. He's unprotected. You got to protect him. I will be releasing a long-term six-month review, but there are all the gripes that I could find so far. Since starting this channel, one thing that I've been asked the most is what is the best action camera for a beginner? You want to start motor vlogging? You want to start doing your thing? What is the best camera to buy? Now, of course, this all comes down to personal preference and I have not tried every single action cam that's out there in the market. At first, I thought it was the Hero 10. I thought that was the one. It all sounded very promising, but as it turned out, it was extremely unreliable, which sadly is what GoPro are being known for across all of their models, minus maybe the Hero 4. I've been using an Insta360 for some time now, and what I can say right now is that I've never had an SD card error with the Insta360. I've never had an overheating issue with an Insta360, minus the go-to. These, they actually say that it overheats, so it shoots like 15 minutes every time. But it's, it's, that's how it is. It's clarifying. It's meant to do that. <laughs> and I've never had a freeze error or any issues with Insta360. It just works every damn time. And for us moto vloggers who are out there riding, we can't redo takes. We can't just pull over and say, all right, boys, let's just back it up a little bit, go 20 minutes up the road and redo this whole thing because my GoPro didn't record. We don't have time for that. And for this, that's where I think Insta360 have absolutely nailed it. Reliability is number one. We need the thing to work. Otherwise, what's the point? This new RS is the best of both worlds. If you need a reliable single angled camera that shoots from four to 6K in high frame rates, then the Insta360 RS does it. If you're looking at purchasing a 360 camera with enhanced flow state, so your footage looks buttery smooth all the time, the Insta360 does it. If you just want one camera that does it all, the Insta360 RS bloody does it. It does it, it does everything. It's actually crazy. I'm like, why would you ever want to have another camera? You just have this, you have your little modules, you go for a ride, you shoot your motor vlog, and then you might want to just get some action camera afterwards, switch over to the 360, boom, 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 got your angles, bang, punch out a motor vlog with interesting stuff going on. Just the one camera. It's not even that expensive either, like considering how much you get. It's crazy. So what are your thoughts on the new RS? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next vid, which by the way, is how I edit all this kind of stuff. Should be interesting. Peace.